Today's CPI report supports the Fed's view that the surge in commodity costs may not cause inflation to flare. But will the threat of rising prices remain at bay? John Herman is a senior fixed income strategist at State Street Global Markets in Boston, a Bloomberg Best Economic Forecaster as well. And he joins us from Boston to share some insight. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Melissa. So looking at prices, we have food prices up 1.1 percent, gasoline up 5.6 percent. How concerned are you about inflation down the road, near term? You know, down the well, you know, down the road, as you're saying, right now, at this point in time, uh, there is this pass through at the beginning of the year. And we're getting this pass through in energy prices, the pass through of food prices. We're seeing uh, some freight costs and freight shipping costs rise. That's working its way into the economy. But uh, if, if the pressures on energy can crest here over the course of the second quarter, then I, I think we're really in a, in a good situation where the economy can continue to grow the job continue to shrink the output gap and just provide sort of modest, moderate pressure on upward uh, on inflation, core inflation over the balance of the year. And that kind of mix of decent growth with gradual rise in core inflation, I think is just what Chairman Bernanke is looking for. And it's just a matter of getting through these one or two months of reports. And I think, you know, going forward, we we should be in a pretty good spot. How how did the end of the first quarter set us up for, for this quarter? It's, it's really amazing. In the first quarter, we had so many disruptions uh, going on in the economy, so many uncertainties. And growth in the first quarter is a little bit on the soft side. We have it tracking about 1.5%. And consensus, I think, is going to come down. But uh, a couple of days ago, it was 28 But uh, what's the best thing to be taken away from the first quarter is that we have many things uh, coming together at the end of it that suggest that second quarter growth is going to be a lot better. For example, uh, we're seeing resilient consumer spending and the consumer sentiment numbers suggest consumers are, are somewhat positive in the near term for the second quarter. We're also seeing uh, a good ramp in industrial activity and in manufacturing output, which is crucial for growing inventories in the second quarter. Also, output of capital equipment is running at a very favorable clip, very solid clip that supports business spending on capital equipment in the in the second quarter our exports should do pretty well in the second quarter and uh, and believe it or not the construction sector may actually get a bounce from the big drag of the first quarter so a host of factors really seem to be coming together and we're, we're looking for uh, GDP second quarter to be over three percent okay. so we should have a good bounce from this one and a half to over three and a half three percent and I think that's favorable for markets John we're gonna go to a break in one moment. But first, a moment ago, you mentioned consumer spending is somewhat positive. How much of that could be just frugal fatigue, though? Uh, no, I think, uh, you know, consumer spending, you know, there's a couple things going on, but we have good job growth as, as a backdrop. Uh, overall, workers work weeks are extending. That helps the, the pay. The wage growth is a little bit soft, as, as, as your commentators have been noting for the past several weeks. Wage growth is a little soft, but the work week is extending. That helps income. So uh, and consumers are somewhat upbeat as as the unemployment rate comes down. So okay, I think overall uh, we're, in, we're in OK shape. I want to talk a little bit more right now about economic growth in greater detail. It is our program Fast Forward. Let's fast forward to next week, not speed through the weekend necessarily. But we're getting starts on housing. We're getting uh, existing home sales. So I'm just curious what you're expecting. Okay, so for the housing market, is again, this is another sector that sort of, uh, you know, went through the ringer in the first quarter. But we think uh, the numbers as we finish the first quarter are actually going to strengthen a little bit. So for housing starts and permits, we think we pick up activity uh, the way we've seen in the construction hiring and the construction work week. So we should pick up activity in March and in April as the weather really improved. The uh, pace of home sales uh, should actually pick up. The pending sales are rising. That suggests that uh, home sales, existing home sales, uh, should improve in 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 the month of March and in April. And builder confidence is likely to improve a little bit as well. I mean, it's still at fairly depressed levels, as the Fed says, but uh, things are improving. How do you have builder confidence slowly ticking in the positive direction when you have so much sh- you know, shadow inventory and just so much inventory in general? Well, you know, in general, that's that's true. But uh, again. Builder confidence was more or less at multi-decade lows uh, for the last couple of years, and now it's 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 a question of degrees. So we're we're coming off of that bottom. We're gradually and gently coming off of that bottom, 
And uh, you know, as the as the weather is improving, as we get a little extra sales, uh, the inventories on the margin just get whittled down a little bit, and the exist you know the existing the survivor builders are picking up a little bit of business on the margin. Mm -hmm. That's key, though, the survivor builders. There, U.S. industrial production builders. up for the fifth straight month now. But have we seen have we seen the true impact from the quake and the tsunami in Japan when we look at uh, factories in the U.S.? Uh, not, not really. I mean, that's that really is, uh, would affect you know the manufacturing output of Japan to much greater extent than it is in the U.S. Uh, and the, the disruptions in the supply chain again more heavily concentrated in in Japan than in the U.S. We will get some of that uh, feeding through. Uh, we're we're not embracing the idea that there's going to be a big impact on the U.S. And uh, U.S. companies, for example, motor vehicle sector, U.S. companies may pick up market share uh, as the inventory on dealer lots from foreign producers are, are low. I want to get your take on unemployment as well. We have unemployment at 8.8 percent, but I know you also like to break it out into age categories, and you say that youngest uh, sector, the youngest working sector, is really the most hard hit right now. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's really the, the young people age 16 to 24 that's greatly impacted. The unemployment rate is closer to 18 percent. The overall uh, unemployment rate is 8.8 percent. But when we look at households, look at individuals 25 years and older, their unemployment rate is 7.4. And we're forecasting that to come down to about 6.7 by the end of the year. We think Chairman Bernanke is actually be pretty, uh, pretty happy with, with that outcome. Uh, I think we're really going to hit that number. John Herman, a senior fixed income strategist with State Street Global Markets, joining us from our newsroom in Boston. Thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful weekend. You too, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you.